Hi everyone, this is our channel Around My Story. Please like, share and subscribe. Hello, I'm Sarah. Ever heard of a phobia before? Don't worry, it's not contagious or anything. It just means you're scared of something in particular. Places, people, things. I have a phobia, but I don't like to talk about it. And I definitely don't want to be seen in that state. I was in my second year at college. I had been very busy that semester because we had a lot of assignments. And it was fine, I mean, I liked studying and completing tasks. But I was never a nerd or a geek. No. I like to dress nicely too. I have my own fashion and style. It wasn't easy making friends though. There were two types of people at my school. Smart nerds who couldn't care less how they dress. And complete airheads who dress nice. I didn't fit in either one of those groups. So I basically kept to myself. Until one day... I got assigned to do a task with a girl and a boy, Jane and Kyle. They didn't look nerdy at all. And I thought to myself, oh great, it looks like I'll be doing all the work. But when we started talking about the project, they didn't just sit there or toss ridiculous retorts. All three of us were having an actual conversation about the topic. I was so thrilled. It finally seemed like I belonged somewhere. We became friends and did everything together. We could tell each other anything. Well, not everything. I had one secret from my friends. I never told them I had a phobia. Anyway, a year later, Jane moved to Germany with her parents. She was going to finish college there. So it was just Kyle and I now. All through college, we were the best of friends. We even did our graduation project together. On graduation day, Kyle and I were supposed to go out for dinner. He wouldn't tell me where, said it was a surprise. And what a surprise it was. He had picked the highest tower in the whole city to eat dinner at the very top. I don't have a problem with high places in particular. In fact, I'm sure I'll love the view if I ever make it to the top. No, I had a problem with the elevator. A phobia, to be precise. So we were standing at the base of the tower and Kyle was happily listing all the great features and restaurants up there, but I didn't hear any of it. I was too busy fretting, frozen to the spot, desperately trying to find a way out of the situation. I couldn't say no to Kyle, who was all excited to go up the tower, so I clenched it in and tried my best to stay calm. We got in the elevator and the doors shut. I couldn't control what came after that. I was terrified, screaming and shouting hysterically, banging on the walls, then falling to the ground. Of course, I don't actually remember any of it. Kyle told me later on. The last thing I remember was the elevator doors shutting close. When I came to, I was at the hospital. Kyle was sitting by my bed looking worried. When he saw that I woke up and that I was feeling fine, he started laughing at me, saying, Why didn't you tell me you had a phobia? I felt ridiculous and started laughing too. And then, out of nowhere, he proposed. It was his plan all along, although he pictured it at the top of the tower. All that happened three years ago. We're married now, and we have a baby girl. I'm being treated for my phobia. It's not completely gone, but I'm way better now. Apparently, hiding my problems never solves them. I'll have to face them, sooner or later. Before this summer, I had zero experience with dating apps. Tinder wasn't even released until two years after my long-term relationship ended. During seven years of my relationship, I had played around with my friends' apps, but never swiped left or right. Finding myself suddenly single at the beginning of the summer and in desperate need of distraction, I dove headfirst into the pool of online dating. I started with Tinder, because my town is too small for anything else, and my cold dead heart wanted casual dates and nothing serious. And that's the whole purpose of Tinder. Tinder met most of my expectations. I went on a handful of dates, met some cool guys, and some not so cool guys. I even hung out with a few truly interesting people, like a radio DJ who runs a wedding business on the side. What I did not expect from Tinder, however, was how most of these interactions started to make me feel good about myself. I mean really good about myself. Like every woman in the world, I have never been happy with my body. At a size 10, I am labeled plus size, and I have worn glasses on and off throughout my whole life. When I'm out with my girlfriends, I'm never the girl who is hit on, flirted with, or even picked up. Ever since I hit puberty and became aware of attractive versus unattractive, 
I've thought of myself as filling the role of the fat friend who just sits back and smiles. Obviously, I've had boyfriends, but they've always been my friends first. So when they said you're gorgeous, what I heard was, I found you gorgeous only after getting to know you. I didn't immediately think you were pretty. I know that having someone attracted to your personality is way more important than thinking you're cute. But I wouldn't hate having just one guy who doesn't know me at all tell me that I'm attractive. Friends, family, and boyfriends, I don't believe. But a total stranger? That person I might actually listen to. This brings us back to Tinder. One of my first nights using the app, a friend and I sat on my back deck and decided who to swipe left and right on. With each it's a match, we laughed and looked into the guy's profile a bit more. After the third match, I said, These guys are just judging me on my appearance, right? And my friend nodded. So they're only swiping because they think I'm cute? Or are they just swiping on every girl? We concluded that obviously some of the guys were swiping right on every girl. But the chances of every single guy doing that were slim. We swiped some more. When I started matching with guys who were classically good looking, well, I won't lie, that felt really good. A hot guy actually thinks that I'm attractive? What? No. How could that be? Then the messages started. Some guys went right in with, you're really pretty. Others went in for a conversation first before giving out compliments here and there. I know that this is how people operate on Tinder, but keep in mind that I'm not used to anything. It wasn't until I started meeting with these guys that I wondered, can Tinder actually boost my self-esteem? Two guys asked how someone as pretty as me was still single. I went on a date with one guy who told me in Spanish that I was beautiful. Another guy who I'd met up with a few times asked me, are you looking for something serious? I laughed like a loon in response. It wasn't the question that surprised me. It was the fact that I was coming for an incredibly attractive, incredibly fit guy. Because yes, I'm being shallow and only swiping right on guys who I find physically attractive. When I was done laughing, I said something awkward like, Oh, maybe? I mean, I'm not against it. My mind, however, was saying, Are you serious? Have you seen yourself? Have you seen me? I was in fact not attractive, but I simply knew how to dress well. I retreated into my unhealthy shell. Soon after that guy, I hung out with a sweet, nerdy medical student who was in town on a vacation. We got along well. The next day as we met up again, he seemed shocked that I was on a second date. He kept repeating, You're just so beautiful. I never get to do things like this. I do know how to respond to compliments. And the medical boy shook his head. He said, Don't do that. Don't body shame yourself. You're so attractive. Have you seen yourself? You're gorgeous. Something about that guy made my typical self-hate thoughts start to lose hold. Again, I know that this is the type of stuff people say on Tinder. But let's be honest, why put in the extra effort? Unless it's true. Somewhere between the casual Tinder chats, the handful of dates, my mind circled a new thought. Am I attractive? I stared at myself in my full-length mirror. I tried to see what these guys saw. Guys who did not know me at all. Guys who are not being swayed by my personality. And guys who have no reason to compliment me because I'm not looking for another relationship anytime soon. Suddenly I started to see it. Where I used to see unsightly lumps and a stomach I sucked in before turning off the lights, now I see a healthy, curvy, and dare I say it, slender body. Friends, family, and boyfriends have always told me that I'm attractive. But it wasn't until these strangers started repeating it over and over that I actually started to hear it. So which is boosting my self-esteem? Tinder or just plain dating? Or are they working in with one another because without Tinder, I probably wouldn't be dating at all? Romantically, I tend not to put myself out there. I typically wouldn't approach a guy and try flirting with him, 
for fear of rejection, of course. With Tinder, however, just matching with someone seems to lessen the fear of rejection. Whether you matched with them because they're genuinely interested, or you matched because they're saying yes to everyone, seeing that it's a match message eases a tiny bit of the tension that goes into dating. Whether it's thanks to Tinder or not, in the past few months, I've discovered newfound confidence. When someone compliments me, I say thank you instead of responding with a self-hatred joke. When I meet a date for the first time, I work at being my usual chatty, sarcastic self rather than being shy and quiet. I have flirted with guys and even gave a random musician my number. For once in my life, I feel like I'm someone worth dating rather than fearing my significant other might be too good for me. Did Tinder give me this confidence boost, or am I just getting older and wiser? I don't know for sure, but what I do know is that I'm not going to stop online dating anytime soon.